Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including She-Ra and the Princesses of Power, which we'll be getting into right now. I'm April Collins, and today I'm joined by Beatriz Murad. Hello. Alex Bonilla. Hey. And Sam Quattro. Hello. Today, all of us will be discussing episodes three and four of season two, which are Signals and Roll With It. So, please, everyone, there will be spoilers, not just for these two episodes, but for the entirety of the season. So, don't be surprised if we start talking about things that have yet to come. But if you are surprised, then I don't know why you're listening to this podcast. Please know that I've warned you and I've told you to stop. Go watch everything, come back, and join us. And then, after you've watched everything, you can find out more about this podcast at OverlyAnimated.com. You can also subscribe to us on iTunes at OverlyAnimated.com slash iTunes, or on YouTube at YouTube.com slash OverlyAnimated. All right, everyone. So, what are your overall thoughts for these two episodes, Beatrice? So... There's so much positivity with these two episodes. Number uh, Roll With It is my favorite episode of the season. Just like saying it now, I think it's incredible. I love it. And it's my favorite of the entire show. Oh, wow. <laughs> of the entire show. This is my favorite so far. Um, it has it has everything I love. All these little it ha- animation changes, references, everything. I love it. I love it. It's, it's great. Um, and it has all... Whenever there's like a team dynamic, when we, whenever we get everybody together and they're having a good time and they're making me laugh, I'm like, this is the best thing. Um, and Signal is great because it's given me like the OTP of the show. It's given me Hordak and Trapta. So <laughs> I adore it and it's great and it will, it's safely locked away my memories as like the beginning of the ship for me. <laughs> So I love it. It was it, like I was rewatching them, and I was like, "This is this is also great." Um, yeah, I mean, Signal has certain things to it that I'm like, "Ah, we could we'll talk about later." But um, um, for the most part, all positive thoughts from me. Love positivity. Um, Alex, how did you feel about these two episodes? Uh, I also agree that Roll With It is a strong episode. Um, I think there are certain parts of it that I gravitate more towards than others. But, like, again, like, uh, when it decides to, like, go into deep emotional anxiety stuff is, like, where I connect with it the most. But, like, the the fun parts of it are still fun. So, like, you know, they're, they're, there's stuff to dig in there. And signals, it, it's it's a weird it's a weird one because like I think that stuff with Adora, Glimmer, and Bow is kind of the boring part, and the one with Entrapped is like yay, like I like this, <laughs> <laughs> make this the main part of the episode. So like Entrapta is a really fun character, I love her, and I think this is one one of her strong episodes. And so I so signals it. It's pro- it's probably the weakest of the season, but like still, the Entrapta stuff is just really good, and so like that keeps it interesting to me when I was watching it. All right, okay, Sam, how how uh, what are your overall thoughts on these two episodes? So I wasn't super high on signals, but that's not saying I didn't like it. Like it had a lot of elements that I can recognize as being good and being like worthwhile, but it wasn't really my thing personally for me it was just sort of okay we're setting up character things we're doing things it's fine it's okay uh what's the other one roll with it i really like that one of course you know we love the D D stuff we love the sort of role-playing aspect to it the fantasy aspect the different animation styles uh, love Scorpio more than life itself, obviously. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't call Roll With It my favorite favorite of the series, as I would, as Beatrice did, but I will say it's probably number two. Oh, wow. Of the series or of the season? Of the series. Ooh. <laughs> What's your number one? I'm curious. Oh. Uh, the next episode. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I love that we're all like really, like, we really enjoyed Roll With It. Um, I also, that was probably my favorite of the two episodes. Again, 
Um, huge D and D person. It was a lot of fun, but then we also touched on like serious um things with Adora, which um I like Alex uh, connect to like the whole anxiety part of it, and like I'm like oh I feel you with that. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that's the stronger of the episode. Um, not to say that Signals isn't good. It's just I agree that it's um it's different and unique to me. Um. I find it interesting that the sort of the A plot of the episode is more so along the lines of like Entrapta sneaking into Hordak's lair versus like the whole like Adora, Bo, and Glimmer sort of plot line of them going to Alwyn. So that I think feels very like, like it's kind of like throws you off a little bit and that's probably why. Um, Also, I just didn't really enjoy that whole like ghost story thing, but that's just me personally. Um, I felt like... I felt like we weren't really, like, doing anything with our characters, like, and I, again, like, something that I've, I, me, like, I'm like, if you have seven episodes, like, make it count kind of situation, and I know, again, like, it's not something that the creators, you know, had any control over, um, but it's not that it's a bad episode, um, I, again, it's just kind of odd because you have Entrapta, like, I guess she's more so of the lead of the episode. Same with Catra versus like Adora taking the lead or our, I guess our quote unquote good guys. So, um, but yeah, uh, let's, I guess, kind of start, um, and get into these episodes. Unless anyone else has anything to say, uh, feel free to just cut me off. I don't care. <laughs> um, so, so the, um, so I guess let's talk about the, I guess the plot of, Glimmer, Bo, and Adora heading into Alwyn. Um, they're going there because they've lost contact with it. Um, and I love that it's described as the farming outpost. It is the supplier of supplies. And what a better way to, I guess, describe a city than that. <laughs> um, <laughs> a, a big old orchard, which is then, like, to use that later, it's like, okay, so apples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apples. Apples. Right? Like, we didn't see, like, I think it's interesting that they described the place as the supplier of the supplies, but then, like, all we saw was, like, apple trees, and that was it. And I was like, so is that all you do here? Like, apples? Because do you make things out of apples? Like, what can you make out of apples? Just don't you can understand. make, like, apple pie, apple flower, <laughs> apple, uh, apple seeds, cider, seeds, apple juice. Apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> you can make seed. wine out of apples. Too, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. D- can you make clothing out of the skins? <laughs> Maybe. Mm. Or <laughs> organic it's, clothing. Or, <laughs> it's like how Muni is obsessed with corn and Star versus the Forces of Evil. They just like apples here. It's <laughs> fine. It's to feed all the horses that can't talk. The- yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's so sweet. Uh, yeah. Oh, so speaking of horses, we have <clears throat> Swift Wind in this episode. Oh. Um, he, how, how did we feel about Swift Wind, especially coming off of, uh, the previous episode where, uh, Adora and Swift Wind are putting back the, um, the communication tower thing? I don't remember yeah, what it was. The, the watchtower. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll say, I tried to defend him in the last episode. Here, I can't defend him. He's white noise. Like He's just like in the background, just like, ah, hey. Like, he's, he's, he's not contributing anything here. I feel like he's making things worse because they're all like freaked out about like, I guess, hearing strange noises and everything like that. And then he's just like, oh, yeah, like, that's not good. And we're like, I'm like, what? Like, this is not positive in any way, shape, or form. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, he's just kind of there. They don't even, like, he doesn't even, no one rides him or anything. There's no, like, there's no, like, he's just, I don't know. He's just kind of, the best friend quad was not a success. (laughs) <laughs> um, I just felt there was no, there was no point to him. There was no reason for it to be a quad. It could have easily just been a, a triangle and we could have, it would have been fine. Um, but I don't know. I also feel like they still, I feel like it was a kind of a repeat of the previous episode as well. Cause they also kind of had to, didn't they kind of, it still has to do with like a watchtower of sorts. Yeah. Kind of. Kind so of. I was just like, I was just like, really again, we're doing this again with the first ones. 
what why and i agree that it did feel very i don't know it's weird i just part of me felt like they were scared of dedicating an episode just purely to not have adora in an episode that much does that make sense like i feel like they were scared to not have her there because it would have been if they had done kind of what they did with shadow weavers episode with light spinner um, then maybe that, and then like, it been more, been braver to just not have as much of them and just really focus on the horde and what they were doing. And I'm not necessarily saying that we should have, have, have should have had an entrapped a Hordak focus episode, even though that's exactly what I'm you, saying. You should be brave I'm, and say it. We yeah. <laughs> no, I'm saying, but we should, but I'm saying it doesn't have to just be that. It could have also been like the A plot could have been Hordak and entrapped and the B plot could have been, whatever Catra was trying to do, like done more with Catra. I feel like they were fighting for that B plot and I felt like they didn't have to. They could have done two separate storylines with the two and it just been a Hordak focus, not Hordak, a Horde focused episode and it would have been fine. But instead we kind of got the heroes on this quest for supplies. And usually I don't mind the, we're, this is the supply route for supplies. Like I usually don't mind that language. I find it cute. I find it for, the show to be really uh, like funny, but it's at these moments where it's like, all right, if it is kind of going to be very bore, if the plot is already boring, this is when you can't get away with those general terms and vague terms. You need to be specific and you need to give me more to be invested in this journey. If you just say, Oh, we're here for supplies from the supply people. Instead, just be like, no, give me, like, what supplies are you looking for? At least, yeah. like, with Katra, who was also, like, trying to figure out how to get supplies. It's funny how they were both on the same mission for different purposes. It's like, well, she was looking for the metal for this and that. Whereas with Adora and her her people, it wasn't necessarily <laughs> It was just, literally, it was just, you know, I, I just felt... It was very slow, and I was I had a lot of urge to skip it, and I did skip it whenever Swift went talked. So, <laughs> I think the only like, um, like I guess best best part about this was there was like a lot of sort of like good one liner kind of things about this plot, like how um, we get like. They're talking about how, like, oh, Glimmer's like, oh, well, we've got magic, and, and Bo's like, yeah, and you've got, like, Tech Master Bo, and, like, and then, like, they're like, we'll do what we always do, and then they go through that whole bit where they're like, oh, we'll use our brute strength, and, like, someone else says, we're, all, we're almost dying, and Glimmer's like, no, like, or even, um, what was it? There's, like, that tiny, tiniest of moments where, Glimmer is like, Ketra's like, right, I'm terrible at this. Like, I can't lead people. And then Bo's like, I'm just not in Trapta. And I'm like, wow, you guys are having some really interesting moments in the middle of being spooked out. Uh, but, like, I, I agree that I think that this episode would have done so much better if, like, maybe instead of, like, following Adora and them that we would have followed Katra as well or and just going through like her like it's it sounds terrible but I feel like it would have been way more interesting watching Katra flip through a bunch of documents and getting frustrated (laughs) than like (laughs) than like them sort of like wandering around this like abandoned city uh Sam how how do you feel about the whole sort of B plot of Adora and Glimmer and Bo? Uh, I mean, it was fine. <laughs> I mean, I agree with Beatrice. Like, maybe it just should have been the Horde episode because it didn't add anything. It felt like not. I, I know that at least in the um the whole season overview podcast, we did a lot of comparisons to Avatar: Last Airbender. Not to compare too much to that, but it did feel like a filler episode from season one of Avatar: Last Airbender. It felt like okay, we're doing this and we're just building up the world, building up the characters, I guess, TM. The only thing of consequence that really happened in the B-plot was the setup of the constellation thing on Bo's tablet, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty much it. (laughs) And, oh yeah, first ones, they were people just like us. Duh. (laughs) I mean... That's crazy. (laughs) It just, it, it seemed pointless in a way, and... Like I said, like it, it was not necessarily bad, but when I don't know, you're kind of crunched for 
uh, movement in a way narratively, this kind of stuff doesn't really seem necessary, and it kind of does seem like a waste of, what, like 11-ish or so minutes that you have for the B-plot. Plus, Swiftwind is just the worst, and I'm very glad that this was his last speaking role <laughs> of the season, <laughs> as far as I can remember. So that's that's a plus to the B-plot. There we go. I like it. Finding a positive I, note of this. <laughs> I will say, kind of slightly to counter what I my earlier rant, um, there was one saving grace besides Swiftman, that being this being Swiftman's final uh, speaking role. Uh, there was one saving grace, which is we got a lot of Glimadora moments, yeah, which is really cute yeah. in the background. And I really like how like Adora eventually catches on that oh wait all these ghost stories everyone told me about were all about princesses hmm, interesting that's like the best part <laughs> yeah well, she was like uh, she kept going and going and she goes oh, oh now i see um but no yeah anytime that uh glimmer had to like just latched on to adora or adora latched on to glimmer it was it was it was really great and um i don't know i feel like even and maybe and this is gonna sound weird but maybe in this this plot it could have they could have done something like gone kind of scooby-doo-esque Kind of with the hijinks, oh. not necessarily like a mystery, but kind of with the supernatural stuff. I know that they eventually don't do the supernatural thing, but I was like, maybe they could have had like a lot of fun, like exaggerated the fun so that it, it, it added more energy to 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 that plot. Because I feel like yeah. that's what it needed yeah. was just like a bit more energy. That yeah, we make did it like a eventually. Scooby-Doo sort of thing. Or you know, just have like them a... running back and forth. It could have been a cool callback to that or something. I don't yeah. know. I was going to say, even because, like, we're very much, uh, like, this, the season is kind of very much focusing on the fact that, like, they're sort of the a uh, united front. And so, like, even if it, like, could have had, they could have, like, totally done this thing where maybe there was an actual, like, ghost haunting the village but like the ghost is just really upset because like it's just trying to make friends and they're like we'll be your friend ghost but you have to like not scare the people like you know what i mean like we could have done so so many better things with this portion of the episode and then we could have like we could have further like i guess strengthened the friendship of our group or something along that and i do agree that there was some really like cute like glimmer dora moments but like we could have like totally like done we could have just done more and i think that's probably why this like part of the episode sort of falls flat and it really does like i feel like it just kind of takes away from the episode which is so sad to say because it's half of it yeah because it's well yeah because it's half of it and also like it's like our three main characters almost and so like like i don't know i just feel like it, it like it just looks bad whenever a show like does something like this with like their main characters and maybe that's just me but um let's move on to the bigger plot of this episode which is entrapta and her budding relationship with Hordak. So, Beatrice. Yes. <laughs> yes. I know so. you're extremely high on this portion of the episode. So, <laughs> tell me all of your thoughts and predictions for Entrapta and Hordak. Okay. So, in, I think it was in, in, in the episode one and two pod. I don't, or maybe it was in the speculation pod. I'm not speculation, in the reaction pod. I don't remember which one it was. They're all blurring together. <laughs> but I, I remember thinking, okay, wait, does Entrapta realize the, the harm that she's causing? And I think we, we landed on not, maybe not, but now I think she does. Watching the scene again, I think she's very much aware of the damage, the, the cost of her science. And she doesn't care. She cares about the science. She cares about the risks. She, she will take whatever risk necessary. And I truly do, like, theory, theory time, I think we will reach a point where Entrapta is going to, like, she's the mad scientist. She will, like, maybe in the process of trying to move the earth, move the planet back into where it was once was, you know, because remember Mara used Destroyed the Shira it. magic to, to move it, literally move it to this little bubble. Um, so maybe they'll go, you can't do this in the process. You're going to destroy the planet and she's not going to care. And at that point, Hordak is going to see that, going to see her 
willingness to throw everything away for her science and just be like, be still my heart oh. that I don't know if I have. <laughs> I don't know. I know. Totally I know. I was Hordak's like, gonna, whoa, this that's is. That's going to be the moment where Hordak is going to look at her the way that Catra looked at Scorpia when Scorpia finally put her first. And it's going to be amazing. And then suddenly everyone's going to be like, these people are mad. They're mad in love. And it's going to be great. <laughs> Wow. No, um, it was. It was. It, it's a great episode. Uh, it's a great interaction. This introduction um, to them. I'm trying to be professional again, and it's very hard. Um, but no, I really like that. Uh, we get to see Entrapta being her s- true self. Like she's not changing for Hordak, and Hordak is not changing for her. We. It's again. We're getting to know Hordak because we didn't really get to know him at all. And now with her, she's just being herself and we are slowly seeing him just become like uh, kind of this very gruffly be like, fine, I do appreciate your help. And now you are in this inner circle. And I also love what this means for Ketra. Ketra is now very uh, self-conscious about this relationship and seeing it blossom. And she just thinks now I was in the inner circle and now Entrapta just came in and was and now is in it without even like... I I don't know. I feel like she's going, I don't know. I'm very interested to see how this is all going to turn out. And will Hordak and Entrapta, like, will Hordak survive? I don't know. Will Entrapta and Hordak win this war? Probably not. But, you know, I can see them be, like, really cool jailmates and just be, like, in prison, but still, like, causing explosions. And then it's great. It's going to be great. (laughs) Who gave them the ability or gave them the tools in prison to... It doesn't matter how. (laughs) Remember, remember, Entrapta said that it's the principle that she wants to use the proper tools to fix the problem, but she could fix it without those tools. She's a genius. She could figure it out. I guess. I don't know. Uh, but you br- you do bring up something really interesting that I did kind of want to talk about because we've sort of been talking about, or I know in the episode one and two podcast, we talked about how there's, um, we're sort of like following this, the sort of theme with Katra and like her seeking approval and, um, kind of like, just dis- like not just exploring like her relationship with Shadow Weaver, but kind of it seems like, with this one, she's sort of exploring where she stands with, like, the Horde. And so I really kind of uh, want to talk about Lord H- Hordak and Catra because she goes to him at the beginning of the episode and she, like, wants to have these check-ins and she's sort of, like, seeking more approval from him, maybe. Um, and then it's even interesting, even more interesting because he... Uh, he sort of, like, pushes her away, and he has, like, that really great quote about, like, failure is when something ceases to serve its purpose. Um, mm-hmm. It's not that great, but <laughs> I'm wondering also if that's sort of, like, foreshadowing, maybe? Like, it, do do we think that maybe there's a chance that, like, L- Lord H- Hordak is going to, I guess... Um, cast aside Catra in much of the same way that he kind of did with Shadow Weaver. Uh, Alex, how do you feel about this? Well, I think the rest of the season, it goes in that direction, right? Because, like, mm-hmm. once you get to, to Light Spinner, um, like, that that whole conversation is, like, her figuring out that, like, she, she's gotten to the point where, like, she feels the need to, like, team up with Shadow Weaver to, like, get get her position back in, in Hard Exercise because here's where it begins to fall apart, and uh, like with, with it's interesting that like Catra in this episode it feels like she just wants to step into Shadow Weaver's shoes right it's like well let's do the chickens like you did with Shadow Weaver because this is what Shadow Weaver did right and then like and the in her like C plot is like her figuring out that Shadow Weaver also had to do busy work and she wasn't expecting that but like in her in her desire to like fill Shadow Weaver's shoes, she like goes along with like having to go to her and ask what what's going on, how to fix it, and all. So like it, it, it's it's just interesting the fact that like as she aspires to be Shadow Weaver, she's immediately losing power like Shadow Weaver did <laughs> as soon as like she stops trying to do her own thing. So yeah, it, it's. Uh, it's it's sad to see Catra like this, but also this is how Hordak operates. And that's also why I find the Hordak and Trapta thing interesting, 
like there, there's a moment where like Entrapta is fixing the uh, the the thing, and Hordak is shouting like "Get out!" Like you're not supposed to be here, and she, she just like doesn't react at all. It's like give me a minute, and Hordak is confused like "Wait, huh?" Like, but he's almost like I feel like it's almost like kind of impressed that <laughs> she's not like she's not really ch- changing for Hordak sort of thing. Like she's just doing her own thing and being useful at the same time. Like that's what Hordak respects. Whereas like Cat is like she's trying to be something that she hasn't been before. And I think that Hordak senses that and in combining with the fact that she hasn't gotten success yet, like that kind of turns him off to Catra as well. So like, it's just Catra and Trapter are two totally different people and they appeal to very di- different sides of Hordak's mindset right now. And so you can definitely feel the shift very quickly in this episode, which I find very interesting. That is why Hordak is so perfect with Entrapta because Hordak's, uh, like weakness is that he rejects failure. He doesn't see the good in failure. And Trapta is all about failure. She's like, there's value in failure, and that's the lesson she's gonna teach him. And she, it's they're gonna be great together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, my, I guess my last point to that too is: so, do you think that potentially Katra will? F- start to resent Entrapta because she does sort of have this like budding relationship with Hordak and Oh well yeah for sure because like in in Light Spinner she's like well I'm not good with the science thing so like you can already tell like by the end of the season that like that's beginning to like come up in her and so I I think that once we we don't see where their experiments end up by by the end but like once that like actually something is built I do think that that's going to push Katra like fully aside and like she feel is going to feel the need to claw back in. I wonder also if at some point, um, cause I mean, Entrapta is obviously very, um, uh, like useful at this moment, but I wonder if at some point that like Hordak and Entrapta and, and we don't really see it this season too much, but I, it makes me like wonder for like, past, you know, the seventh episode, if there is ever going to come a point where Hordak doesn't find Entrapta useful anymore. No, 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 that's what's so going to be so great. She's all, he's always going to find her intriguing. How old is Hordak? (laughs) Age doesn't work the same way with a skeleton. (laughs) Age doesn't work the same way with the skeleton Beatrice 2019. <laughs> <laughs> by, by the way, it trapped is saying, I never had a lab partner. Partner before. before. Oh, no. Come on. oh my and god. Funny, he was like, Oh, I'm gonna work with my new assistant. And it's like, oh, we're lab partners. She sees them on equal level, which is mm-hmm. so great. She's like, I'm clearly smarter than you, but I won't I'm like kind enough that I'm not gonna bring you down. And then she's just unfazed by him trying to assert his dominance and she's like no i'm the i'm the one who's like in charge of everything here it's so great she also has what is it that moment where catra calls it hordak's sanctum and she's like he calls it his sanctum sanctum? (laughs) so classy that's so classy (laughs) (laughs) um any other moments i guess from this episode that you guys kind of want to go over before we get into all of our favorites roll with it I will oh. say, oh, sorry, you can go ahead, Alex. Oh uh, well, I just want to give a shout out to the uh, to the MVP in terms of like most production with little screen time. The imp is great, okay? Like, oh, uh, uh, that he, thing he, creeps he, me his out. His <laughs> abilities are perfect. Like, he, the the episode begins with just him repeating useless, kind of like foreshadowing what the rest of the episode is gonna talk about. <laughs> then when like Catra gets pushed aside, like he's just such a troll, just like. You know, failure or pathetic 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 <laughs> the, the, like it, it, the imp is perfect in his like injections of trolldom and i love it i hate him <laughs> I don't like he's the either. creepiest little baby that has ever been <laughs> he's like the less cute version of meteora yeah, dude. For real. I mean meteora is like on the cute end of the spectrum that little freaky imp baby is on the demon end of the spectrum <laughs> oh oh and, and and he 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 hisses at catcher when like Hordak, like tells him to like go go away and let her let him be with entrapta imp, imp ships it i think imp ships it imp's, imp's on Beatrice's side I, yep 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 I, that's the only saving grace for imp um but i will say one final thing um is 
Hordak is basically Kylo Ren, right? Basically, uh, he's angry. His color scheme is red and black. He, like, destroys everything that he doesn't like. He's he's basically Kylo Ren. I'm putting it out there. He's probably comes from, like, heroic origins, and then he turns to the dark side. I'm putting it on the universe. I bet that's what's going to happen to Hordak. <laughs> <laughs> right. Writing it down. <laughs> See how much better, like, it's like... Having like okay no this, this is gonna get too off topic never mind <laughs> is it is it trapped a rose or like no I was about to yeah, say, like, really about to say like, see, like this is why Raylo doesn't work because it would be so weird for Adora and Hordak to be a thing but like you know Hordak and Entrapta we gotta find the Entrapta version of in Star Wars which I guess maybe would be Rose but I'm not no I don't think it maybe <laughs> I, we have to see Kylo and Rose interact maybe that would be really interesting who yeah. knows. Who knows? Um, also, one thing I don't think we mentioned this in the Adora stuff, but like the the very very end of the episode is us like cutting to like a red desert type place, and there's like a cave with first ones tech, and a screen lights up with the same patterns. That doesn't get touched again in the rest of the season, is that right? The red waste is that, the, that, that it's red? I mean, the, that's that would my be thought. The info- like. If, like, that's what I would get out of that, is that potentially. But again, like, you wouldn't really know that until after you've already watched the entirety of these right. seven episodes. So like, on, on first watch, it's just like, okay, well, that's a cliffhanger we'll get to someday, but we, I guess we're not getting it to it this season. But there you go. Like, that's the end of the episode. <laughs> just I to, told, okay. it's not, so this is, like, how much, like, unimportant that was to me. I totally forgot about it until you yeah, brought I it did. up just now. <laughs> I and I literally even... watched this episode today. <laughs> also, we didn't mention port. Well, well I, guess, I guess we did mention portals, but like just portals, man. Portals. Like, portals. Oh, yeah. Portals. The cake is yeah. a lie. Yeah, but... get some GLaDOS in here again. Yeah. Uh, is this the episode where Hordak suffocates Katra? Is that also in this episode? Yeah, yes. no, that's the last episode, isn't it? Well, well, no, no, he no does this, it is, at the beginning yeah, this is the of introduction of the device. And yeah. then later, he does it again. Okay. See, this okay. is why this second plot was so much better, because there's all these little things. Yeah, because he, like, tests it out on um, Katra, and he's like, oh, the atmosphere here is such a complicated variance. And I'm like, wow, you're extra right now. Um, and Katra no. would laugh at him. She'd be like, complicated variance. Well, please, tell me what they are. Name them. I don't believe you. <laughs> Also, no, it could be impressed. It's like, whoa, you can control the light, oh, the yeah. vital statistics yeah. of the <laughs> <laughs> She'd be like, how does this work while she's choking? Yeah. Also, uh, I love that uh, Hordak like throws all these like would be insults towards Entrapta, and they just like blow over her. Like she doesn't even like acknowledge them. Like. She's just like, oh, wow. And I lo- also think it's interesting, too, that Entrapta sort of tries to appeal to, I guess, like, the whole Horde, like, th- way of thinking in order for her to sort of um, get to kind of do whatever she is. And I don't know if she's doing this on purpose or if they're having her do this on purpose, but when they start talking about portals... Um, she's just like, oh yeah, she's like, you could easily like transport troops to one side of the yeah. planet. And I thought that was also very like, it, it's something small, but kind of like to take note of, cause I feel like she's almost like in her own way, manipulating them to get them to let her just do whatever it is that she wants. She's just like, yeah, let me help you with these portals so you can move supplies and weapons. Like... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And also the one time in this entire exchange when she actually gets like ang- kind of whatever angry is for Entrapta is when she goes, tell me everything, which just sh- which just shows you that like information is the like knowledge information that is what drives Entrapta to do whatever it is that she needs to do to get like it doesn't matter what moral dilemmas she doesn't care who she has to manipulate if that means she can get answers to questions about how how the world works and how the universe works she's like so game for it well and she also like throws it in his face a little bit too because he she's just like hey like i helped you fix that like it wouldn't be working if it wasn't for me so you should tell me everything like what it is that you're working on and i think that's also like a very like powerful moment for entrapta too um for her to just i guess to kind of just be like that much assertive 
also, especially given like in the beginning of the episode, she's like, I shouldn't go into the lair, but I, I'm going to do it because Catra won't find out kind of situation. Yeah. So it's just kind of like interesting to watch her go from sort of like passive to being like, just tell me like what it is that we're doing here and I'll yeah. help you. Yeah. Because before what was at stake was a, was a screwdriver basically. But now it's like, no, it's the knowledge of portals. Like she so- must know. <laughs> She wants to figure out how to make them. No one can blame yeah. her. Um, but so final question for this episode. Did Entrapta ever fix her desk? No. So yeah, I never think left the sanctum. Yeah, I think she <laughs> just kind of forgot about it in, in terms to uh, further her science. You know? I think she gives the head driver to Emily and sends Emily oh. to fix it. Oh. There you go. That's Here. the answer. That's smart. Uh, Delegating. <laughs> Very few um, small detail when um, when the thing is about to explode, Emily is the one who brings uh, Entrapta's head down for cover. <laughs> <laughs> you see Emily's leg just like trying to bring and drop his head down. So also very um, cute little detail. Mm-hmm. Love Emily and I want to get to know her personality more. Oh, right. What Emily would happen better if, not die. Well, what would happen if Emily turned but entrapped the stayed? Like, like em- that's why oh. I'm saying maybe Emily could get hurt. Maybe like someone kills Emily and that's what turn. That's what gives. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't. Know. Maybe that's. Or that that's act- activates and trapped a rage. Or, or, <laughs> but you know, it could be. She's like, okay, well, Emily version fifty one's done, but now I can update her. I don't know. I don't know. We don't know how Entrapta thinks. It's she's like she's a wild cannon, and I don't know. And it's so great. Yeah. <laughs> she really is. Free Emily twenty nineteen. There Free you go. Exactly. So many good hashtags <laughs> coming out of this episode. All right, so roll with it. Um. I guess to really quickly sum this up, they are coming up with a plan to reclaim a fortress that the Horde has taken over. So I'm going to start this off with just a very quick question. Whose plan was your favorite, Sam? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I really like Glimmers, obviously, but I really like Bose, too. I thought Bose was just, like, adorable, and he got his day in the sun because he doesn't want little Bo to die anymore. That's I like true. That. He, he only got, uh like, captured in a net, so that was very... Yeah. I, I guess it was like, successful. <laughs> I like Catra's puns. <laughs> oh, the cat puns between yeah. Bo and Catra. There yeah, was too I many. Was I tried to like write them all down and I was like, I can't. There's just, this is too much. I'm not going to encourage this behavior. Uh, Alex, which was your favorite plan? Uh, I, I, I'm torn between Glimmer because like the music is great and like just her style is great. But also, I mean, Sira though. Sira! <laughs> So upset. No one mentioned Sira. I was like, no, this is this is a must. I think we know Beatrice's answer. <laughs> Uh, Dude, she has dolphins. She has two dolphins, <laughs> and she has her own music. And <laughs> and she's like, you know, her hair is gonna be messy, but in that sort of beautiful way. And it's like, girl, I totally get you. And I love how Bo was just nodding very like knowledgeably. He's like, yes, I understand completely what you're saying. It's like it was the greatest thing. Um, but I also love Adora's reaction to every single one of those plans because she's just like, whenever she's reacting to Katra is the greatest thing. Either she's just like, that's not how she works. And she goes, what? This would never happen. And then her just completely, her entire interactions with Mermista being like, you can't be she And it's like, well, obviously not. I'm she It's like, oh. <laughs> it, was, it was gold. It was gold. Um, I, I think I also think that she was my favorite. Specifically because, like... Mermista is just like she's she's just like very like monotone like she's gonna have dolphins and the trident of power and she's gonna have shoes that are slightly better than my <laughs> own and glitter sparkle glitter glitter like <laughs> like I just thought that was great uh but then what the other thing too is that I think it's really great that like they all got to kind of like live out their uh their plan of action at the end of the episode uh but anyway so let's just start I guess with the beginning um because they're playing they're role playing to plan um how they're going to take over this fortress. Um, and I love that it opened up, it opens up with Bo dying. 
<laughs> Which was very, like, startling for me. Yeah, um, that threw me off. I was like, whoa, rip bone, he's just dead. <laughs> yeah, she was just like, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you don't make a successful observation check. Uh, I'm also, I'm uh, sad that they didn't, like, continue, like, to kind of throw that, like, D&D element. Like, oh, well, you didn't make a successful sel- stealth roll, like, or something along those lines. Well, the only one who was really doing it was uh, Perfuma, right? And, yes. and Frosta. Like, Frosta was like, hey, like, I have a sword that gives me plus three strength. <laughs> my, my favorite part, though, is that, like, Perfuma and Frosta were the ones who were, like, totally playing the game. But also, like, their plans were, like, the least, like, exaggerate, like, huge exaggerations. Like, theirs were pretty reasonable. Like, Perfuma wants to have a giant plant golem. Like, okay. I those actually happened. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, like, uh, Frosta had, what, got to, I guess, sort of be Frostbite Winter's Bane. But, like, uh, like, she as much as I loved it, that wasn't really gonna happen. <laughs> Except she's just waiting for her trident of power from Bo, because he's totally going to make that for her, right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Um, how did we feel about Bo's mustache? <laughs> Loved it. I thought it was beautiful. Mwah. More mustaches for everybody. Everybody in the show should have a mustache. Though, the one thing I've noticed, nobody has just had, like, a beard, which makes me wonder, it, it, are mustaches this more popular in this universe? Can anybody grow a beard, or is it just, like, the upper hair... The upper lip hair is what grows in, um, in this world. That's true. I don't think it, have we seen beard? We need to be on beard watch, obviously. Yeah, beard, beard watch. watch. Beard watch. <laughs> beard watch. <laughs> 2019. Uh, season 2B. <laughs> what if Entrapta tells Hordak to grow a beard? You think oh Hordak would do it? Could Hordak do it, though? He's got a mohawk, but then the rest of him is like a skeleton. So I'm thinking, like, maybe the. There's like one bit of flesh on top, then that's the hair. <laughs> and yeah. then, I mean, I'm not sure he could. I mean, he'd look cool in it. I'm not saying that he. Yeah, I'm saying like it, it would be it would be a good scientist pairing look, like you know, old scientist with a beard and then trapped <laughs> his full do you, life. Do you think he Again. would just prefer to grow a mustache for and trapped a? <laughs> do you think they have stores on this planet that have like? Like mustache shops where you can just buy a mustache and just clip it onto your lip, oh. and then it'll just be a mustache. For you. Maybe that seems like the kind of thing Bo would have done, like b- behind everybody's yeah. back. He would it's have like, already oh. done it at this point. Yeah, it's like, ooh, let, let's see how it feels to have a mustache. Maybe that's going to be the epilogue of the series. Bo just <laughs> opened up a mustache store. I will say, um, I thought it was really. Speaking of the mustache, I thought it was really cute that like his, one of his dads has a mustache. So yeah. it's like, oh, it looks just well, yeah. like his dad. So he adorable. probably thought of it. And I think his one of his dads has kind of like a five o'clock shadow, maybe. No? So maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, it's close to a beard, I feel. Yeah. It's like baby beard. Baby beard. Maybe just like beards aren't acceptable in any workplace. And that's why. But mustaches are. Kind of like with police officers. I guess, beards. like, if you really? Have... Yeah. My husband, he, uh, the only facial hair he can have is a mustache, um, so he can't have a beard, which well, is very that makes sad. Sense, because, like, you know, somebody can, like, grab onto it if it's too oh. long. You know yeah, what, but, like, are sense. women supposed to have, like, lo- short hair when they're police officers? Well, like, no. Have, like, a really tight bun, right? Yeah, it has to be. Because I'm just saying, uh, even a bun can be grabbed. That was something they told me in self-defense class. They're like, <laughs> you ladies with your long hair and ponytails and buns, you're you're dead. And it's like, oh, oh shit. wow. <laughs> it's like, you're dead. This is oh, why you're no. here. Oh, no. I have terrible news for Adora. <laughs> <laughs> no, poor Adora. God, yeah, especially the she version of Adora, who just has, like, hair spilling out of her head Everywhere. every transformation. <laughs> Secret I, I think she's like she's strong enough where like even if someone does yank her hair, she like her neck wouldn't even move. Yeah. You know, she's like that powerful. She's also really tall, so like yeah. you could even reach her at that point. Exactly. Okay. So totally wow, we got off track. I love <laughs> it's it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um I guess we can just sort of quickly run through. Um so like Glimmer had that sort of uh, like I wanna call it like comic book anime noir style cowboy bop. Um, yeah. Ooh, yes. There you go. Um. So everything was pink and black. Uh. I like that. Lots of that... horn music, like. Yeah. <laughs> so very like jazzy and everything. Um. 
Her Catra is in a fancy dress and heels with eye patch cat. I will um, say that's my favorite Catra of the bunch. <laughs> is like, fancy dress and heels. Like very fancy, like looks very just like, like in a dress. It just made me feel a certain way. That's all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but obviously her plan doesn't work because she runs out of teleports and as part of her plan, she falls on Bo. So that's R.I.P. Bo. Uh, and then Bo's plan is obviously with him in a mustache. And I like that we like don't really get too much into Bo's plan. Um, but also his style was, I don't, I called it 90s cartoonish. Was that? Well, it was, it was like a, a callback. Sunday. Yeah, it was a send-up yeah. to the original she Okay. Well, I, I felt like it was less detailed than 80s, like she but, like, more along the 90s style. But... Well, it's like trying to be in in between in be- the yeah. 80s and today, so... Uh, yeah. 40-year difference was a... So, uh, yeah. Give or take... You know what? <laughs> um, age doesn't apply to skeletons, so... <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes. yes. Sure. <laughs> Um, but, like, his plan wasn't really a whole lot, just eventually, it's funny because Adora's like, yeah, but you're forgetting the most important part, Catra, and he's like, no, I haven't, and then Catra comes out, and she's in, like, this torn outfit, and she turns into a cat, which I feel is appropriate, um, there was all of the great cat puns, um, and then, of course, the Horde also has dragons, according to him, um, but it's his plan ultimately fails because he nets himself. Um, Perfuma, of course, has her giant plant golem um, that comes over the the walls. And then I guess it gets set on fire was how that comes to an end. And then um, I thought Frosta's was very... In- oh, we have She-Ra, which we've already discussed with her dolphins. She-Ra, She-Ra. She-Ra, excuse me. <laughs> Um, with her dolphins and her trident of power. Um, and then there's Frosta's Frostbite Winner's Bane, but her friends call her Bane, except she doesn't have any. Um, which I, (laughs) which I think is a very interesting callback to, like, the first episode. (laughs) Dark and mysterious. Right? Uh, so she has an ice suit that shoots out ice. Um, and she has her sidekick Glimmer. Which, uh, Glimmer is very offended by. (laughs) Um, but what this episode really amounts to, um, uh, and then we see all of the multiple versions of Catra. Uh, I think I agree with Beatrice that my favorite Catra was, uh, Glimmer's version. Um, makes me feel some ways as well. But, <laughs> I, I like uh, that Frosta only sees Catra as being in a suit since like, that's the only, from the that's party. Really the only time she like has memorably seen her. Which that's is like, you know, very true. straight. She's just like, you know what, like I've only seen this this woman in, in a suit, so I'm assuming she only wears a suit. Yeah. Well, very she, like she should. But yeah. also sunglasses. sunglasses. That is and an sunglasses. important that's addition new. she's that's made. <laughs> She thinks she's really cool and needed, like, an additional aviators to just, like, add on. And she was like, yeah, she she might, she's like, yeah, she's a villain, but she's, like, a really, like, fly villain. (laughs) Fly villain. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, so all this amounts to is Adora just wants to form the perfect plan. And uh, this is, of course, the part that I most relate to. Because uh, Adora feels that because if she's not perfect, then... Not, well, they just av- lose this fortress, but they'll lose the battle and then the entire, like, war essentially against the Horde. Um, so Alex, talk to me a little bit more about your feelings on this, because I know that you, like me, sort of really connected to this moment. Right. And I think that th- this, like, the Adora monologue is kind of, for me, where the episode hinges on, like, being a great episode. Because, like, throughout, you get all, like, the fun, the fun scenarios <laughs> that the other princesses develop. But, like, on the side, you keep seeing, like, Adora, like, reacting badly to this. When, t- by the time we get to Perfuma's plant golem, like, you can see, like, she's beginning to twitch and then, like, see, uh, see Raja's like, what? Like, she's, like, getting more, more unhinged as it goes on. And so finally, it, like, it, it boils over and she has to, like, lay out, like, how all their plans are going to fail. You're not taking Catra into account. So again, like, bringing up the fact, like, Catra is, like, a thing that's in her head and she, like, can't get out. 
She uh, she uses that part of like Catra will separate me from you guys and I won't be able to help you. So like it's again bringing in the thing we talked about from episode from episodes one and two, where like her connections to her friends is something that like she is motivated by, but also like it gives her pause because she wonders what will happen if she is unable to go to to, to pull through in the moment when her friends most need her. So like that that all co- comes out and fi- finally it's just like it's all going to be my fault like uh, even if like uh, uh you can you guys can blame it on other factors like it's going to feel like it's all on me and so she like can't even finish her sentence at the end like if i'm not perfect everyone will and she kind of just breaks down there but then uh, obviously, obviously like the other princesses come together it's like well we have your back and like a glimmer is uh, very meaningful there it's like well I, we fought without powers we were able to get out of it you can let the fear paralyze you, but you can roll with it. So kind of using the title yeah. of the episode, but <laughs> but yeah. So like, uh, Glimmer is uh, reminding Adora of something that Adora has needed reminding of throughout this show so far. That like she isn't alone, and she doesn't need to feel that the weight of the world is solely on her shoulders. That she has other people around her, and she. But at the same time, she doesn't need to let her connection to those people freeze her to the point where she is unable to function health healthily as a person as she goes forward. Yeah, no, I think that that like pretty much sums up a lot of it. And then it's all, it's also interesting too, that Adora has taken a lot of this, the pressure of everything that's going on and really like puts it all on her. And I think that it's uh like, it's kind of sad because no one's, put that all of that pressure on her except herself and um i mean in the first season they they sort of were like oh we have the she-ra now like everything's gonna get better and then like not everything has gotten better um i mean they lost you know i they lost in trapped a, to a, in a certain sense um who could have been like a really you know game changer for them and i guess they're sort of just now realizing that too but then like it it I agree that she it she's definitely very distracted by Catra. And the and then the like the funnier part too of that is that like Catra's not even in this episode except it within like the role playing of everyone. Um but that's always like biggest like Adora's biggest concern is just Catra. Um you know like like we're going to lose because Catra's going to separate me and then like it just sort of snowballs from there. So I think that's it, it's just really interesting that she feels that way. But it's also sad that, like, even still, like, she hasn't quite understood that, um, like, her, like, her friends are there for her. And, you know, not just her friends, but, like, all of their kingdoms and everything like that. Um, and, like, it just makes me, it just makes me feel like it touches me so much. And I'm like, oh, Adora, <laughs> I like, I'm like, I, I didn't cry, but I like wanted to. I was like, I feel all of your pressure, girl. Like, <laughs> please let me love you and stand by you as well. Um, but yeah, uh, it, does anyone else have any other thoughts on that? Beatrice or Sam? I think the nail was pretty much shit on the head. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Alex, for <laughs> yeah, Alex, you're so eloquent. I know. Um, but yeah, uh, so. I guess moving out of that. Um, so we get a transformation sequence, which is great. Um, as you guys know, I love transformation sequences. Mm. Um, and then, so let's sort of change direction and get into, um, one of my favorite, but also very frustrating parts of this episode, um, is the B plot. So Scorpia is left in charge, uh, of this Ooh, fortress. I love it. I love it already. <laughs> Sam, uh, did you get enough Scorpia from this episode? Yes! Okay, so <laughs> this was one of the episodes, I guess, that had, like, a small preview before the season aired, and it was just basically Scorpia being like, oh my god, Katja left me in charge. I can't believe she believes in me that much. I'm gonna send her, like, flowers. What's her favorite color? Et cetera, et cetera. I was like, oh my god, girl. You're so perfect. <laughs> I don't know. The thing about Scorpia is, like, she is kind of portrayed as a little bit bumbling and a little bit scatterbrained, which I can relate to being both bumbling and scatterbrained. But, you know, she's so lovable and people generally like her. And she isn't a bad person despite being on the bad side. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And I, I think that's hopefully going forward, that's something that we'll explore more in the show. And again, hopefully she'll realize, you know, just because her family sold their souls to Hordak doesn't mean that she has to be a part of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I agree. I think this is like a really good, um, I think it's a really interesting introduction as to like diving deeper into Scorpio's feelings for Catra. Yes. Um, because I think from season one, you know, Scorpio kind of mentioned that like, oh, like her and her family weren't necessarily accepted, which is also why they joined the Horde too. And so it's just unique that she is latched onto Catra so much. Um, and like, I think it's a, I think it's adorable. Um, but it also is like unique for me too, because Scorpia has these really, really deep affections for Catra and like, you really want to ship them. But then like Scorpia, like there's always like, they add in the things like, oh, like she's like my best friend and like our souls are bound together by our friendship. And I think that's really interesting that she's like, has these very deep affections for her. Um, but only relates them to in like a friendship sense. Like, even though like in, in a later episode, she like, like properly asks Katra, not out on a date, but to like hang out with her. And, uh, I think that was like very disappointing. And then I was just like, why don't you just ask her on a date or something along those lines? Um, and that's something for, you know, that episode. I can't remember which one it was exactly, but like, I don't know. I, I does that bother anyone else either? Um, Beatrice, do you do you think that they're doing the Scorpia Catra thing well or no? I mean, on the one hand, I mean, I do think that Scorpia does feel romantically for Catra. I do think that. I think when she, like, for instance, when she said like that binds us with the string, the, the string of fate. That like she was very like, and she calls her her beautiful wildcat. Like they're when she was asking her out which is what she was doing like that if it was just like oh let's hang as like let's just hang after after work like she the way that she's acting these are signals of someone who has more than platonic feelings for another and you know later in i think right right out it's episode five when she has that Mm -hmm. conversation with seahawk it's like they're paralleling her relationship with katra with his relation his relationship with mermista which has already kind of also been established as like a romantic kind of thing so i do think they're giving us the signals I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, is it annoying that they all, they have to play it so safe and be like, oh, we're in this gray area. Cause meh. like it is annoying. It, it's frustrating that like, you know, if this were a heterosexual couple, they would, it would, it would be obvious. It would be it, like, it, there wouldn't be any room for this like gray area. Um, it would just be, yeah, this person likes them. That's it. Um, and I don't think anyone, they would need to toe this line of weird line of friendship. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I also like that they're, they're, you know, they're established, they're, they are giving us the signals, they're establishing the attraction, the relate, the, 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 at least the feelings from a uh, Scorpio side. And then it's kind of like, I, I don't, ex- I expect, I expect it to move the way it's going in terms of how much is being progressed. Cause I want them to take their time. I know that Ketra isn't at a place where she's sub- able to reciprocate any emotions to anyone, whether that's Scorpio or Adora, she's not in, in a good place right now to do that. Um, she needs to learn her love to love herself first before she can love someone else. That's what Ketra needs to do. Um, but I don't mind I, I like again. We have fifty-two episodes. What? Epi- I what? We were. I don't even. Are we at the halfway mark? No. Uh, no. So I don't even think we're at the halfway mark. So I think we are. It's fine for where we're at in the season. If she, if we are still towing this line of like, will they? Won't they? Like, does she? Does not even will they? Won't they? We're not even there yet. It's more of will does she doesn't she have these feelings are these feelings more platonic or are they more not if we're doing that three quarters of the way in then i'm gonna have a problem then i'm gonna be like okay by this point this isn't this isn't this isn't allowed anymore this has gone into queer baiting territory but at the moment i think it's it's fine hashtag fine 
Hashtag fine. Yeah, I, I agree that it's it's fine for the moment. It's sort of more like budding feelings on Scorpio's end, right. and it's not it's it's not an issue. And I have I have trust in the writers, animators, etc. That they are not gonna bait anybody. Um, in terms of DreamWorks and Netflix, uh, that's another yeah. story. Yeah, <laughs> but we'll see how it happens. For now, I'm I'm perfectly okay and like what's happening okay it's good yeah i'm i'm i i feel like it it's uh i I think beatrice pretty much summed it up for me as well that it's like okay this is fine for now but like at a certain point you know we have to kind of like like figure out are we going to step over the line or are we not going to step over the line with this um especially because scorpia is just so sweet and i love her so much (laughs) Yeah. And I just want her to be happy. But I also, like, <clears throat> whether or not that's with Catra, I couldn't say. Um, but I think it would be nice if we, like, we could get Catra to a point where maybe she could reciprocate those feelings. Because I feel like no one's going to love her as much as Scorpio will. Um, which is very evident in all of the sweet things that she says um and just how she sort of fawns over her like just wanting to get her a thank you gift for leaving her in charge i think that's adorable (laughs) but how does she not know her favorite color it's again can katra see color Mm. oh Mm, good question i don't know can scorpia see color Hmm. (laughs) (laughs) if katra had a favorite color what would it be well the fact that the fact that Scorpia can say what's her favorite color makes a we can assume that Scorpia has a concept of what color is and can understand what it is. So I think it's safe to say oh, that Scorpia fair. can see color. I don't know if Ketra can. That's true. Ketra's favorite color is like reddish gray. Yeah, you know, like she, she wears a lot of red. So yeah, you know. but well, maybe she yeah. just doesn't realize she's wearing red. Dun, dun, dun. So maybe she thinks it's like maybe she's like the the type of colorblind where you see things off hue. So maybe she thinks she's wearing like pink or something. She's like, "What? I'm very feminine. I'm wearing pink." Like, <laughs> oh my god, what if she like her nails are black? And what if she thinks they're just like this really cool, like I don't know, sh- purple, <laughs> purple? And then she's like, "What are you talking about? I'm not goth." And it's like, "Dude, your nails." And it's like, "What?" <laughs> it's great. I can't. Um, I want to know. Yeah. Can, can I ask yeah. where was Catra during this episode? See, <laughs> like, I want to know that here. too. I was <laughs> that was literally going to be like one of my like ending questions. If we didn't get into it, was going to be like, all right, you guys. So where was Catra this episode? So uh, theory, where do you think she was, Alex? Uh, <laughs> doing cat things that we can't <laughs> see on screen. I don't know. <laughs> so like hacking up. A- hairballs like sure <laughs> um like cleaning herself uh yeah because i it just it feels so weird that like the entire time it's like well Catherine's not here yeah Catherine told me to watch this it's like okay what is she doing alone like i don't really like she doesn't see well she she probably is capable of doing secret plans but i don't think we've got any hints of like what kind of secret plans she would be, be doing. doing so i don't know uh, Beatrice, where is Catra? I'm trying. Episode? I'm trying to remember if if Scorpia had a conversation with her, like over like a tablet or something, uh, where she said where she was in like the beginning beginning of the episode. I'm trying to remember if that, that was episode if I'm, two. That was episode two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then I think Catra is uh uh. <laughs> To, okay, okay. I think she is trying to figure out how to talk to Shadow Weaver again. Oh. Oh. <laughs> she's like plotting. She's like, like okay, she's like, what can, can I, I bring up with her? Like, maybe I'll just find this random file and I'll just bring it into the office or the jail cell and just be like, explain to me this. I oh my god, that. she's figuring out the stuff. She's like figuring, she's doing busy work. We learned this in the previous yeah. episode. That's oh. what she's doing. Oh. She's doing paperwork. That's where I think she is. She's just she's sitting just at doing the desk, paperwork. doing paperwork. She's getting caught up. up. <laughs> she's like she needs, months like, behind. 
<laughs> she needs like a personal assistant or something, but I guess I would be Scorpia at this point. Yeah. But like Sc- Scorpia in episode three can like barely hang on to the files. Yeah, so. Scorpia has big claws, so oh. it doesn't really work. Okay, I think that Katra is conducting interviews to find an assistant because. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Well, for, okay, hold on. Hear me out. Because. She doesn't want to burden Scorpio with that because she clearly was struggling with it just a little bit. But also, um, if their relationship should take off, it would be very inappropriate for her to have a relationship with her assistant. I see. Nailed it. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> yes, I see. And there, the, mm. the Horde obviously has, um, rules about dating your coworkers. So. So is this why Hordak doesn't feel anything towards Entrapped? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Are, are they co-workers, though? Well, they're he sees it partners. as an assistant. Look, so, they're yeah. lab partners, and I think <laughs> Hordak can, like, do whatever he wants. And when he falls in love with Entrapta, he's gonna go for it. Wow, that's oh, an man. HR violation. <laughs> it is. I'm gonna, who's, the, who's their HR manager? I need to talk to this have, person. Have, okay, will HR actually be, like, brave enough to tell Hordak no? I don't think so. If they're a good HR person, then yes, they are. I would just assume that Shadow Weaver did all that. So does that mean that Catra is now the HR manager? Imagine that conversation. (laughs) (laughs) That's part of her thing. Catra is actually firing people from the Horde. She's just sitting in her office. Who runs the anti-harassment stuff in the Fright Zone? (laughs) Comment (laughs) to say who you think it is. Uh, Kyle. (laughs) Uh, it would not be Kyle because <laughs> Kyle gets harassed. Not like he gets harassed all the time. Everybody um, hates Kyle. Um, uh, who would it be? Okay, we know that there's no proper HR because Kyle exists. And if Ky- yes, like Kyle sir. would not be bullied the way he is if the if a proper HR person was there. You know, like, maybe competent. Kyle just hasn't come forth with all of these accusations. Wow. Well, you think a good HR person would be like, be like, you know, observational to how much people abuse Kyle, you know? <laughs> like, literally. Someone like, else was reported it for it. Every <laughs> single time Kyle is there, somebody's like, yelling at on him. him. And so how has nobody else reported that on uh, Kyle's uh, behalf? Maybe for- that's what the spy bot was given to them for. R- r- related to this, at the end of the episode, they blame, they're like, we, we all <laughs> unanimously blame. agree to blame Kyle, Kyle. Yep. For, for losing the past. So, like, is Kyle going to get thrown in jail again? Poor Kyle. Poor, Poor Kyle. Kyle. Poor Kyle. Well, uh, the only other thing I have to talk about is that uh, the spy bot, did we all think that it was also cute, as cute as Scorpia did, or yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh... No. I, 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 I'm just, Scorpia and Entrapta think robots are very cute. Uh, I'm just saying, like, this is a thing in, in, in this show that I, I mean, it, it, it's probably pretty common in real life, but like, there are probably people out there who just like find robots very cute. But I just find it interesting that now there are multiple characters that find robots like cute little pets. I think Scorpia just finds anything that's tiny cute. Okay. And Entrapta Maybe genuinely something... finds robots cute. Well, but Entrapta also finds small things, like small Oh, things right, because too. she likes small food. So mm-hmm. maybe it's that that's going on. Maybe Scorpia and Entrapta are... Oh, maybe. Meant to be together. I mean, self, don't self look. Ship. Look, I'm just saying, Scorpia has her eyes on a certain wildcat, and Entrapta is <laughs> busy trying to open portals portal, with Hordak. Open portals, and Hordak's about to show her the world. Like, so he's they'll, about to they'll start be, the stars. So. He's, a, he's but when, when both of those <laughs> fall apart, so they'll rebound into each other. <laughs> hey, it's, I don't know if it will fall apart. You have to have some hope. <laughs> Um, may we all have hope uh so the only other thing is that um i guess to bring up with this episode is that scorpia in her beautiful sweet innocence takes them all seriously when the spy bot he overhears them oh, yeah. talking about uh a uh, plant golem and she <laughs> and first off i love that she doesn't even like question that she could potentially exist uh she's like oh no yeah. who's she um 
Sea Raw, excuse me. Ugh, I can't, it's too close. I can't help it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, my last question, um, unless you guys have anything else to talk about, is how would you rank these two episodes in season two for you so far? Would you put them at mid, lower, or upper tier? Upper. Upper? Well, upper for roll with it. Uh, I don't want to go, I don't want to say lower for signals, but that's kind of what I'm feeling. <laughs> so, that's sorry, everybody. Too. How dare you, Sam? No, don't don't be sorry. I have the same answer. Like, this is upper tier, the, the episode four is upper tier, and signals is lowest tier. Like, that's just how it goes. So that, right. that's, that's, that's all on the <laughs> Adora uh, bow glimmer side. Like, Entrapta has nothing to do with this. She is free of guilt. All I right. mean, if she's free of guilt, you would know that she can carry this into mid tier. Like, you would mm-hmm. know that it's so valuable, the Entrapped and Hordak content. It's so high caliber <laughs> that we know that that could lift it to mid-tier. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I do know, need- but that's what I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laying down the law. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, I, I apologize, Beatrice. I have to side with Alex and Sam on the oh, upper, How dare you? lower <laughs> split. I'm, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Um, I so... apologize to Entrapta. <laughs> sorry, Entrapta. Sorry, Entrapta. Entrapta yeah, doesn't I... care about my feelings. She's gonna, just going to roll she on. She doesn't care. Know? Um, all right. So that's all that I have for these two episodes. Uh, any final thoughts, Beatrice? Yes. Um, I want to pinpoint these two adorable moments that were just there for like a fraction of a second, but they're worth pointing out. Um, this is the episode, uh, Roll With It is the episode where we get Lonnie blushing at Scorpia. So that's another like very cute interaction. Um, I, I, again, we could have, for signals, instead of it being an Adora, the, the B-Pot could have been about Ron, about Lonnie and, and Rogelio. Like, we don't know anything about him. So we could have had that have been like another thing. And again, I- wasted opportunity. Um, and then another thing, which is really cute, um, when Bo is giving his, like, when Bo's plan is failing and he's trying to explain it, you see, uh, Perfuma next to him, just like, with both, like, her hands cupping her face and just being, like, you adorable, adorable creature, you, to Bo, and she's just giving me him, like, this, like, these eyes, and I'm just like, oh, they're cute, too. So. Uh, final thoughts, Alex? Uh, Mermista is a treasure. Uh, <laughs> Imp is a treasure. <laughs> There's, a, there's so many great characters here. Like, Entra- like wait, I've already said so much about Entrapta. And, like, Hordak is, like, getting better. Like, he's getting better as a character after, like, season one where, like, he was nothing. But, like, the, the, these epi- the signals, like, it's kind of a highlight episode for him. So just a lot, lots of lots of great stuff. And, you know, Adora is, is still, like, you know, a very... Um, it, it's a it's a troubled character, and I'm glad that like even even like sandwiched by like all the fun that these episodes are having, but like we're we're still uh, got to deal with you know the deeper conflict of the of the show. So like, I, especially roll with it is like a, just a very balanced episode in terms of, like how fun Shira can be, but like still like touching on the 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 emotional capabilities that the show always seems to d- demonstrate. Yeah, I was um to I guess to build off of that too. I I think that the show does a really good job when it does it is um balancing like funny and serious um moments and content within an episode. Um and I think that role with it is just a really good example of them doing that and succeeding at it as well because sometimes shows sort of fall flat when they're trying to like do something serious, but also something not so serious at the same time. So, um, but Sam, final thoughts yeah. for these two episodes. Um, when are we doing Shira D and D on the podcast? That's my <gasps> thought. Yes, we should definitely do it after this we episode. Should. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean, it's the perfect thing. Like you know, it's all set up for us. We can do it. Come on, Andy. We already have, we already have the like situation. We have to reclaim the fortress taken by the horde. Look, all of the contents there. 
It's there. <laughs> we just have to make up our own OCs. Yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah, good good episodes. I would say just trucking along. I I said this again in the general season podcast. I do think that season two is stronger than season one, and even though I was wasn't as high on signals. Uh, I do think that these two episodes definitely exemplify that. All right. So I guess that's just going to wrap things up for us today. Um, you, of course, can find out all the info on this podcast at OverlyAnimated.com. You can also join us on Discord to text chat, not just about she and the Princesses of Power, but all the shows that we cover. And you can find more information about that at OverlyAnimated.com slash Discord. Please support us via Patreon at Patreon.com slash OverlyAnimated. Thanks to all of our current patrons, especially the patron of the podcast, Steve, a.k.a. Frequent Commenter Steve. And as and thanks as always to our Patreon executive producers Ryan, Steve, Alex, Beatrice, Hey Girl, Hugh, Hi. and Michael. <laughs> why did Why did I get a Hey Girl? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey Alex. Hi. <laughs> uh, become an executive producer, and I'll say hey to you. Uh, <laughs> of course, join us for the continuing coverage of Shira, the Princess of. And the Princesses of Power, Season 2. We're covering all seven episodes, so hang on tight. Um, But join us again here at Overly Animated. Thanks, you guys, for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye! 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 Bye!